Hello and welcome. I hope that you are having a fantastic day. We have a really great program for you today. We're going to look at the next Bitcoin bull run. So when you want to have a good idea what direction the market takes, a lot of people go and they look at what's happening on the news. They want to hear from the experts. They want to hear from the people who have a reputation in the financial market. Some people even turn to cable TV in order to get their financial news. The, the, the tricky part is, is it's happened multiple times over and over. A billionaire goes on TV and they say one thing on, on cable news, on the business news networks, And then you turn around and you find out later privately what they were doing with their money. And it was the opposite of what they told you to do on the cable TV. And the problem is, is that there's a lot of people out there that are more than happy to give you their opinion. But what we want to do is we don't want to look at somebody's opinion. Show me the money. In other words, show me what they do with their money, not with what they're telling me publicly. Because if you can find out what they're actually doing with their money, then you have a better idea. It's kind of like um, it's a little bit more accurate in terms of the truth of what they believe. Because You're going to do things with your money that you have greater confidence in, that you have a greater expectation. And so when it comes to predicting or comes to looking at when will the next bull run happen, I want to take a moment and let's look at the money to get a better idea about the next Bitcoin BTC bull run. And so that's what this video is going to be all about. We're going to look at the money. So hang on to your coattails, watch the video all the way to the end. I think you're going to love it. So should I buy Bitcoin now or should I wait? We're going to give you ideas to help you take profits and avoid losses. Can we get this video to 99 likes? Smash the like button. It really helps us out. It, It really does. It makes a huge difference. So if you enjoy this video, please smash the like button and help us out a little bit. We're giving you the video for free, and I hope that it really does help you take profits and avoid losses. So I'm not a financial advisor, and this is really true. My background is not finances and banking and all of that jazz. My background is computers and technology. In fact, um, it's really kind of funny. My wife and I would go on vacation, and she would read romance novels, and I would read uh, technical programming books. And so um, I really am more of a a programmer, a computer guy. I've been doing computer programming for 20 years and web development, web design. I did that for about 10 years as part of that 20-year history. Well, not quite 10 years. But anyway, I've been doing the, the computer programming game for quite a while. And so this is not financial advice. This is my opinion. Cryptocurrency involves substantial risk of loss. Please take a look at the rest of this paragraph. We want you to trade safely and in a way that enhances your lifestyle, not in a way that that hurts you financially. That's the last thing that I want to see happen. I'm trying my best to help you make good decisions, and I'm trying to learn enough to help myself make good decisions. So... Where is the money? Can you show me the money? The last time we saw this, and this is from Glassnode. Glassnode, just so that you know, is an organization that investigates the money. They take a look at the Bitcoin addresses, and based on the actual deposits in those addresses, they show you information. And so they're literally showing you how much different people have in their Bitcoin addresses. Now, we don't know. In some cases, we know who that address belongs to. But for the most part, most Bitcoin addresses, the address itself is anonymous. 
but we can see all of the incoming and outgoing Bitcoin uh, crypto into in and out of that address. Here's the point. Back in 2016, when, okay, so Bitcoin hit its last all-time high of $20,000 per Bitcoin in uh, December of 2017. And that's this spot right here on this chart. And so you can see there was this tremendous growth between that point and when it actually hit the $20,000 mark. In fact, if you find the low in here, I think if I remember correctly, the low is somewhere around $770. So it jumped from the $700 price range all the way up to the $20,000 price range. That's better than 20 times your money. And it did that in about 18 months. And so imagine taking some money, investing it. Maybe you took $1,000 and you invested $1,000. Imagine getting uh, for somewhere around 12 months, 18 months, 24 months, you took that $1,000 and you got back 20 grand. That was a good deal. You really, you smoked it, baby. I mean, you really, really did well. And so what we're seeing here is that's what happened on this last bull run. Now, this yellow line indicates um, this, the, the peak of this orange line on the chart. So what does this orange line on the chart represent? This orange line represents how, what percentage of Bitcoin had been in the same address for a year or longer. Let's zoom in on this a little bit. So we can see that when Bitcoin hits all-time highs, the people start selling off their Bitcoin. And so the number of addresses that have had that Bitcoin in it for one year or more starts dropping every time Bitcoin hits a new peak. When it hit this peak, it had dropped. When it hits this peak, it drops some more. And so people are selling when it hits these peaks but when they're, when they're holding on to their Bitcoin, it's the hodlers, hold on for dear life, hodlers that are kind of helping us give a, a significant clue because we're looking at what they're doing with their money. We can determine in a better way what they believe is going to happen with cryptocurrency. So the people who own cryptocurrency are not buying and selling it. They're hanging on to it and they've hung on to it for one year or more. So the last time that we saw that 60% of all Bitcoin had not changed hands for a year or more was just before we hit this $20,000 peak. Now you can see that as we came up to the $20,000, you know, people, people started taking profits and they started selling off their Bitcoin until just after that $20,000 peak, you can see that the low of the percentage of people who had had Bitcoin for a year or more dropped all the way down to 40%. And so at this point, uh, like 42, 43%, somewhere in that ballpark of addresses had uh, held their Bitcoin for one year or more. And so the number dropped significantly right around the last all-time high of $20,000. And that's because there was a large number of people who wanted to take profits, take their money out of Bitcoin and, and take profits. Well, you can see right here, we just hit that same 60%. And so when you see a large group of people who are using their money and they're investing in it and they're holding on to it, that shows a very, very strong amount of confidence in what, it, what they expect in the near future. And as everybody has, if you've done your research, if you've done your homework into Bitcoin, you know that typically after the uh, cryptocurrency halving, that most of the time, well, historically every single time, Bitcoin has gone on to a parabolic, a very dramatic bull run and seen some dramatic price increases. And so that, expectation is being confirmed by what people are actually doing with their money. Now let's look at another area where we can see what they're doing with their money. And that happens to be grayscale. Now if you have a TD Ameritrade or a 
Maybe you have a Charles Schwab account. Maybe you have a regular stock brokerage account where you can go into your stock brokerage account and you can buy and sell stocks. Then you'll be able to buy and sell the Grayscale Trust. And the Grayscale Bitcoin Trust, um, basically what you're doing is you can buy that trust on just right out of your regular stock account and it gives you exposure to actual Bitcoin. And the money that Grayscale takes, a portion of that money goes into buying actual physical Bitcoin. And so in the last week or so, they've added 19,879 Bitcoin to the trust. In fact, the trust is purchasing Bitcoin faster than the miners can mine Bitcoin. So it's unbelievable. Grayscale added 19,879 Bitcoin to the trust since last week. They have a total of 53,588 Bitcoin since the halving a few months ago in March. Now, Bitcoin miners only produced 7,081 Bitcoin since last week. Um, 39,544 since the happening. And so when you compare these numbers, 7,000 to 19,000 and 39,000 to 53,000, you can see that Grayscale is accumulating, they're buying Bitcoin and they're adding it to their total amount at a faster rate than Bitcoin is actually getting created. And so they're purchasing up everything that the miners are creating and more. Now the other thing is is that if they continue if the grayscale trust continues at this pace, grayscale will own somewhere around three and a half percent of all Bitcoin in the world. Now the last number we saw when grayscale put out their financial reports uh, for the first quarter of 2020, showed that they actually own somewhere around 1.25% of all Bitcoin in existence. And so they're growing at a dramatically rapid rate. They're buying and adding more and more Bitcoin to the trust and they're holding on to it. Now, why is this important? It's important for two reasons. One, it goes back to this number here where we're seeing a larger and larger amount of Bitcoin bought and held for a year or longer. Um, and so Grayscale is one of those entities that are buying it, but they're buying it in very large quantities. I mean, Bitcoin has been trading for $9,000 per coin. So when you're buying almost 20,000 20, coins at 9,000 each, that's a ton of money. They're investing a lot of money. And so the, we can really see where they're putting their money at. They, they are showing us the money. That's the first thing. The second thing is, is Bitcoin, uh, Grayscale in particular, 90-something uh, percent of their money comes from institutions. It's, it's large institutions, large investors that are the bulk of the customers that are buying up the Grayscale Bitcoin Trust. And so that shows us what institutions are doing. And when we can see, see, let me put it this way. If you had $6 trillion under management and you're responsible to make sure that you're turning a profit for that $6 trillion, you're going to put the money where you think it, where, where it's going to make the most money for you. But you're not going to be doing this as a guessing game. You're not just throwing darts against the wall and going, oh, wow, that hit IBM. Let's buy IBM. It's not a random thing when you invest money. It is a very deliberate, methodical we, we, we researched it out. They invested a bunch of money in research before they ever make a decision. And so they spent time making a quality decision. And that quality decision led them to decide, okay, we're going to buy Grayscale Trust. And there were enough institutions that bought Grayscale Trust that Grayscale turned around and bought 19,879 Bitcoins. And so what we're seeing here, when we see Grayscale doing this kind of volume, or even the 53,588 Bitcoin since the halvening, 
what we're seeing is where are the big money players putting their money? Where is the smart money? And I, and I call it the smart money not because they're any smarter than you, but because they spent more time, they spent more research, they spent money to try and figure out what the best thing to do was. And so it wasn't some haphazard, half-accidental purchase that they made. It was a very deliberate, very methodical, very well thought out decision that led them to the conclusion that, hey, we're going to buy some grayscale trust. And there was enough people, enough institutions that made that decision that grayscale trust in turn bought almost $20,000 of Bitcoin in the last week. Think about that. $20,000 almost at 10,000 a coin, 20,000 coins. I'm sorry, I keep saying $20,000. They bought 20,000 Bitcoins and each Bitcoin was worth real close to $10,000. It was a 9,100, 9,600. If they really timed the dip, they might've been able to have bought it at $8,800, but that $8,800 price was just so fleeting and fast that I tend to think that most of this was purchased at the low 9,000s, 9,100, 9,500 price range. So anyway, I hope that this has been helpful for you. I hope that you follow the smart money because if the smart money is making those kinds of choices, then those kinds of choices should help you and I making good decisions. Now, this is my opinion. I'm not a financial advisor, um, but that's what I think. And this is the sort of thing that I would tell my mom and my friends, and I do tell my mom and my friends. In fact, I just sent an email to my mom uh, asking her to, uh, telling her about my most recent videos and asking her to watch them. So, how can I be of service to you? Do you have any questions? Do you have any thoughts? Do you disagree with something I said? I would love to hear your polite disagreements in the comment section below because look, it's really simple. You know things I don't know. I know things you don't know. And when we share what we know, we'll grow smarter together. I want to grow smarter together with you and I hope you'll share your polite disagreements below. In the meantime, I look forward to like, subscribe, and huddle, and I hope that you have a fantastic day.